Very good. Good evening. It looks like we have quorum. I will uh, call to order the Finance Committee meeting of June 13th, 2023 uh, at 6.01 p.m. Uh, the first item of, on our agenda is the approval of minutes, draft minutes of the May 23rd, 2023 Finance Committee meeting. Do I have a motion for approval? I move approval. All right. Alder Wheeler has motion for approval. Is there discussion? Hearing none, I'll place the motion before us to a vote. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Motion carries. Moving on to item three, public appearances, non-agenda items. Scott, yes, no one on cha in chambers or on Zoom. Very good, thank you. Moving on, item four, finance director report, and we have our director of finance, Misty Dodge. I'll turn the floor over to you. Thank you. Uh, so first, there's two documents included in the packet. Uh, the first one is the 2022 annual report for the finance department. This includes some historical trend information about number of transactions and kind of the history of our debt issuances and is a nice summary of all of the activity we did during the year, what our goals were, projects, that type of thing. Um, so that's included in there. And I'll pause if there's questions on that report. None. None. Excellent. None. Also included in the packet is a letter from the finance director of the city of Madison, Dave Schmedeke, and I. Uh, we have gotten through the apportionment for the town of Madison. So the two of us wrote a letter to the two mayors that kind of outlined the basic numbers of what we did to calculate that final apportionment. Uh, it's all based on the framework that was approved by both councils through that apportionment agreement. So at the end of the day, uh, City of Fitchburg, we got a check from the City of Madison back in 2022 for about 600000 for our share of the town, of, uh, the town hall. And then once this is all finalized, I'm expecting another check from the town of Madison for about $220,000. Um, so that letter is included in your packet so you can see how that was all done. Uh, so it's really, it's really great. To be honest, I was fearful that we were going to have a net deficit, that we had to pay money to uh, someone in order to take our share. Um, but we do have about $800,000 of, of cash that we can use to help address some of those deferred maintenance items that we inherited from the town. So it's really helpful to know that we have that amount of money to help with those projects. So I'll pause again. Yes, Alder Gerard, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, just and just to clarify, so that is going into a separate account to deal with town of Madison issues, or is that was that for the six hundred thousand and not for for the? So, uh, I haven't gotten the check yet, but my intention is would be to deposit with the same place where we put the six hundred thousand. So it's a separate CIP project called Town of Madison, and then the council, through the various processes, could decide how you want to spend that money in particular. You aren't technically required to spend it on Town of Madison stuff, um, but that would be my recommendation. We want it to be on one-time things because it's one-time money. Um, so capital is a great place for it. And since we got the money from the Town of Madison, it makes sense to invest it back into that area. Great. Thank you. Of course. Additional questions? I do Misty? have more. Oh, yes. Of course. Go ahead. Uh, so CIP, that was released by the mayor on Friday. Hopefully you all have had a chance to at least locate the document. And then tomorrow night we have our special finance committee meeting. It starts at 6 o'clock. Um, it will be here. This is the meeting where uh, I'll talk about logistics, where to find the document. Mayor Rada Frada will go through an introduction of what her priorities were as she was putting that document together. And then you will have all of the department heads that have projects here to present the projects and answer whatever questions you have about it. So I'll have it up on Zoom. I've encouraged most of the department heads to be on Zoom as well. That seems to be a pretty uh, efficient way to share the information. Um, and then once we get through that part, we have a public hearing at the next council meeting. And then amendments are due July 5th. So well on our way for that. Uh, only two other things. So one, there was a lot of talk in the past about the debt ceiling limit. Uh, obviously, that's been figured out for the most part, so it's not a concern. Um, but also want to just share from the city's perspective what that impact would have been on us if it had not come to an agreement. Uh, we are invested in some treasuries uh, through our WISC account. Uh, but the money that we have invested in treasuries is all of our uh, fund balance amount, kind of that excess idle cash that's there. So even if we would not have been able to get that cash back when our security matured, it would not have affected the city's 
financials or our ability to pay our bills. So we are invested in them. There would have been a, a timing issue, but it would not have made a significant impact on us. And then the last thing is the shared revenue. I know we've talked about this a couple of different times at these meetings. It sounds like there's an agreement amongst the various parties at the state level. Uh, so the city, if it's all ultimately approved, is expected to receive additional shared revenue. Um, so we'll wait to see what gets approved and what those strings are that are attached. But it's, it's really great news that there is at least a recognition that the shared revenue has not met the needs of the local municipalities um, and will at least be more sustainable and growing, which was always our goal. That is it. Uh, let me circle back on the shared revenue. I know you and I have had a conversation, but uh, the, the, the shared revenue that we currently receive, just so that those that are watching, it, it, we talked about approximately 300000 Correct. So we get a few different, I'll call them pots of money from the state, mm -hmm. but the shared revenue that this one's targeted at that piece of it is currently about 300,000. Okay, very good. Is there any additional questions or? All right, hearing none, we will move on. Thank you very much, Misty. Uh, next item on the agenda is the review of bills. Item 5A, detailed review of checks for $10,000 and above for the period of May 16th through the 31st, 2023 totaling $1,187,773. Questions, discussion from the committee? Hearing none, we'll move on to item 5B, detailed review of all checks issued, checks 125203 through 125281 for the period of May 16th to the 31st, 2023, uh, totaling $1,288,693.01. Discussion from the committee. Hearing none, moving on to item 5C. Detailed review of all ACH payments for $10,000 and above for the period of May 1st through the 31st, 2023, totaling uh, $550,191.09. Questions, discussion? Hearing none, moving on to 5D. Detail review of all ACH payments for the period of May 1st through the 31st, 2023, totaling $561,848.15. Discussion. Hearing none, we will move on to uh, the next item on our agenda, and that's the action items under item 6, 6A. Do I have a motion to move resolution R-95? Dash two three extending the life of tax incremental district number fifteen by two months to improve housing quality and affordability. I move approval. Motion for approval made by Alder Gerhardt. Uh, and Misty, you will speak to this item. Yes, please. Right. So TID fifteen is the former town of Madison TID number two. So this is that TID that we inherited from the town of Madison when they dissolved. Uh, what this resolution would do is it would do the affordable housing extension, similar to what we did with TID 6 last year and then TID 4 just a month or two ago. Uh, so if this is approved tonight, uh, it authorizes us to keep the district open for two months, uh, which will give us enough time to close the district. And then the revenue or the increment that we collect in December of 2023 when those tax bills go out, uh, that revenue will go towards the affordable housing fund. I don't know how much that's going to be exactly at this point. We're in a little bit of a different timing situation than the other two. Um, but all based on the numbers for this last tax roll, I'm expected it'll be about 600000 that will go into that affordable housing fund. The plan at this point is to use it for the same type of projects as what was authorized with the TID 4 closure. I mean, those are listed in the referral sheet and on the resolution. Very good, thank you. With that 600, projected 600,000, what does that bring the, the total amount? Around 7.5, 8 million, somewhere in there? I'm gonna say it's eight to nine, do you remember? Is it really I that? think it's two, a little over two million for TID six, of mm -hmm. which a lot of that was being spent on the rent to own town home project. And then it was about four million for the TID four closure, and then this be another six. Okay, very good. Are my numbers right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay, very good. Uh, additional questions and discussion? All right, hearing none, place the motion before us to a vote. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it, motion carries. 
Uh, moving on to the next action item, 6B. Do I have a motion to move resolution R-98-23, amending the 2023 stormwater and water utility budgets, water rate case professional services? I move approval. All right. We have a motion for approval made by Alder Wheeler. Misty. Yeah, so I'd like to start by kind of talking about the water utility. So in order for the separate water utility in to raise their rates, we have to go through the PSC or the Public Service Commission because the water utility is a regulated utility. Uh, so uh, we go through a full rate case. It's kind of the whole big process. You can do simplified rate cases under certain circumstances, um, which will give you a flat 3% with a much, much easier process. We've done that twice in the last five years. Um, but since we did our last full rate case five years ago, if we're interested in increasing our water utility rates again this coming year, we need to do the whole full rate case process. So in order to do that, we do need to hire a consultant to help us with it. Uh, this budget amendment's coming through for you. Uh, part of it is because of a hiccup we had in the budget. We budgeted for that consulting services in the wrong utility. It was in the stormwater utility instead of the water utility. So this resolution would clear up that kind of clerical error. Uh, but then the other piece of it is the cost for the consultant is higher than what we anticipated. Um, so we are, there's a budget amendment included in here for uh, reallocating money from another project to help make up that difference as well within the water utility. Very good. Questions, discussion from the committee? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Motion carries. Uh, moving on to the next action item, 6C. Do I have a motion to move resolution R-109-23, approving 2023 through 2026 ecological services <coughs> for the West Lacey Road Stormwater Facilities contract? I move approval. All right. We have a motion for approval made by Alder Gerhardt and um, Misty? Tracy Foss Tracy. is here. She's the Assistant Public Works Director. Tracy, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thanks. So the city of this project consists of um, performing uh, restoration, native restoration for the storm facilities uh, on the Lacey Road project, the reconstruction project that's happening right now. Um, it includes the restoration and then three years of maintenance uh, management, if you, or four years, I'm sorry, of management, if you will, of those natives to get them established uh, so that, that from that point forward, then we'd only have to do a burn uh, periodically to, 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 to control the weeds uh, in that facility. Uh, we did advertise in the Wisconsin State Journal and put it on Quest. However, we only received one uh, RF, uh, one proposal for the project from Field and Streams uh, for it for $77,000. I did speak with Ben, our environmental engineer, and he said that was in the ballpark for what he expected for prices uh, for this, this work. We did add some work to it. Um, KL had put a plan together initially, and we did add a few things, items to the, to the contract. Uh, uh, the, year, the additional year, it was originally three years. We made it four years. And then we have some, um, some additional spraying to control. Uh, the critters always want to eat our, our seeds, if you will, so we have some spray that we're going to be putting on the seeds to hopefully keep the geese from, from eating, eating our, our, our natives once we, once we plant them. Okay. We've worked with Field and Stream many times, uh, you know, through developers and through our own contracts, and they've, they've provided a very, very quality product for us. So you have a good, a good positive experience with Field and Stream then? We, we do. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Additional questions? Yes, Alder Gerhardt. Thank you. I, I, I answered this last night, but I just wanted to flag it. So this is all coming from the TID, TID money, is that correct? Or Two TIDs, yes. Um, the TID for the stormwater facilities at the corner of Lacey and Seminole Highway, and then for the Lacey uh, West TID as well. Okay, awesome, thanks. All right, very good. Any uh, additional questions or discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Motion carries. Uh, moving on to the next item. So this is the one I'd like to interrupt you on, if I may. Yes. Uh, so staff recommends that we postpone this item to the next meeting. Okay, very good. Do we have a motion to table? Make sure I have my, my place here. Resolution R-110-23, acceptance of the 2023 utility improvements bid. And the motion would be to table it until June 27th. I move to table this resolution until June 27th. Very good. We have a motion to table from Alder Wheeler. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Motion carries. 
Uh, moving on to item 6E, do I have a motion to move resolution R-11-23, approving purchase of a, th of a three quarters ton Chevy utility truck? I move approval. All right, we have a motion for approval made by Alder Gerhardt. And Tracy? Oh, yeah. So the um, last year when we went to order our truck uh, through the state bid process, the trucks that were available sold out in six hours. And so we didn't even have time to go through an approval process to, to order the trucks. We, we, need, we usually get the prices first, and then we send the resolution for, through. So this year we are sending the resolution through prior to receiving those state uh, bid prices. Um, we anticipate that the price will be higher. We had 32000 budgeted. We're, we're asking to... Um, to take 8000 from the the generator, the money we had budgeted for the generator um, for this truck for a total of 40000 to purchase it. Uh, going through this process early will allow us, once the state bids do become available, then we can we can order the truck right away and hopefully get in that window before they all, all sell out. Very good. Is there a cap on the, uh, whatever we approve this evening? I mean, or is there some flexibility? Let's say it comes in over 10% over the, what we approve. Do we, do we know? I mean, is there some oh, some some sure. allowance for you, or does it do we so that we don't lose out? I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. So um, we did. I actually I received this, the the pricing this morning, oh. and it was forty seven thousand for the truck. So once we approve this, we'll have to do a change order to make up that difference before we before we order it. So it was more than it was even more than we had budgeted, and more than we anticipated it would be by adding the eight thousand dollars. So that does not hold up your process, even though it's even though there's a, a change order. Uh, does the change order? How does it work? The change order work here with the city? Does it come back to us then for additional approval? Do we? No, it, it it won't because it will be or will it? Misty? Yeah. So I believe I heard you say that there's a budget amendment associated with this one. There is where we moved eight thousand. It's in the same fund. So I, I I don't know if you'd call it a budget budget amendment. It's in the same equipment replacement fund. We're just using the money for the generator for this. The generator we have has hardly any hours on it. I mean, it, it, it may have years on it. We haven't had any issues with it. It works great. And a new one would be $160,000, and we can only get about 8000 for the one we have. Mm. So it makes more sense to just keep using it, um, you know, especially with the fact we haven't had any maintenance issues with it. It's, it's quite expensive to, to replace. Yeah. So we'd, be using, we'd be using more money from that. Okay. And there's enough money within that same CIP project to absorb it? Yes, yes, okay. yep. So then, yep, uh, no further council action would be required. So there is a change order. There's a paperwork process we'd have to do, but it would all be approved by the mayor because it is within the total overall budget. Okay, all right, that, yeah, that's where, I, where I'm going with this. I just did not want to lose out on the opportunity, and sometimes you'll excuse me coming from private sector to city can be a little bit slower. So I, yeah. I didn't want us to miss an opportunity. We appreciate that. Thank you. Alder Gearhart. Thanks. Uh, Tracy, or I guess Missy too, so we've been having to do more of these pre-approvals for trucks, which makes a lot of sense. Do we anticipate that this is something we're going to have to do more regularly going forward, or is this still a kind of a COVID supply chain issue backup? I, I know that electric trucks are kind of a different ball game entirely, but just generally speaking, is this sort of a new procedure we're going to have to go through? Well, we hope not. <laughs> but right now, yes. Until until we see a change, we'll we'll you know work this way to get, to make sure we get those state bid pricing, uh, because there is good savings there by going through that process. Yep. And we do appreciate council's flexibility with us, because usually we do like to come to you with a full project and get approval. But you have you have been very flexible, giving us some more authority, and we really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there any reason not to do it? I mean, it does seem like it's somewhat convenient because then you can do the bid on the first day it opens. And I, I'm just going forward. I'm I'm just curious what the downside of not making this kind of a regular process that we go through, so we don't miss out on these types of opportunities. I, I would think like the one thing that's happening here is we didn't have the final price, right? So so we have 40, but it'll it could be more. So so that would be the the one downside, I would say to it. Okay. So if it's not within the, if the account can't cover it, then we would have to go back to yeah. mm -hmm. council potentially. Okay. And that was my concern, I guess. That's why I was asking you the initial question. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, additional discussion. Hearing none, I'll place the motion before us to a vote. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Motion carries. Uh, moving on to the next action item of 6F. Um, let's make sure. 
6F. Uh, do I have a motion to move resolution R-114-23, adopting the 2024 annual city budget schedule? I move approval. All right. Approval made by Alder Wheeler. And Misty, would you care to speak to this item? Yes, please. Uh, so even though we are just starting the CIP pro public process, we need to start planning for the budget process as well. Uh, so this proposed schedule is available for you to uh, consider. The only real change from last year is that we're a little bit delayed in the actual adoption of the schedule. But from here on, it's very, very similar to what we did last year for your consideration. Okay, very good. Uh, discussion from the committee. Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Motion carries. Moving on to the next action item, 6G. Do I have a motion uh, to move resolution R-115-23, approving change order number three for maintenance services at well five, and this is a direct referral. I move approval. All right. Motion for approval made by Alder Gerhardt. And um, I suspect, Tracy, you're speaking to this as well? I am, yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so this change order is to true up our final numbers, um, unit costs, if you will. So we put an estimate together uh, at the beginning of like how, how many feet of column pipe, how many couplings, you know, well components, if you will, that we'll need. But we don't know until we pull the well uh, how many we'll have to replace. It also includes, um, we sent the motor in for reconditioning. Uh, the, the leads were bad on the motor and the ratchet, when they went to put it back together, the ratchet broke. We did have another, another contractor take a look at the ratchet just to determine if it was fault of putting it back together. Uh, they said they didn't think it was fault of the contractor that we were working with, that, that it was a fluke and that, and that, it, and that, that, that broke. So that is part of, part of the cost of the change order. And then the, the final component is we had to remove more sand. Uh, we developed this well uh, this time when we pulled it. Developing helps with capacity cleaning out the sand so we don't have as much sand going through our pump and in the reservoir. Uh, when you develop it, you, you push uh, nitrogen, if you will, into the formation. It's like huge surges of, 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 uh, of uh, nitrogen, and then it, and then it creates a, a fast flow of water uh, into the borehole, if you will, and that pulls the sand into the borehole. But after that process is done, that sand then settles to the bottom, which is a good thing, and then we bail it all out of there, and instead of going to the reservoir, we're, we're getting it out before we put our pump in. But with that process, it generated another 51 feet of sand that we needed to, to remove. So this, uh, this total this evening uh, trues up all the numbers, um, accounts for all the additional sand we removed, and then uh, includes uh, reconditioning our motor before we put it back in service. Very good. Thank you for the details, uh, detailed explanation. Uh, Alder Wheeler, you have uh, questions, discussion? Mm -hmm. Will we have to do this again five, six years, or so old again? Uh, y yes, every, we, we have this one on schedule for every five years. We watch the capacity and the energy usage to determine if, if, if uh, it's, it's becoming inefficient, slowing down is what it'll do. It'll pump less water. And then um, and, and we pull it sooner or later, depend on, depending on what we see. In regards to the air development portion of it, the nitro bursting that we did, the last time we did that was in five, in, in 2005. We watch, each time we put it back in, we watch how the capacity comes back. You know, the first few times it looked pretty good. Um, but it, but it was time now so that, you know, we were, I think last time we put in, we were a little over 14,000 gallons per minute. Initially, when we started, you know, when we first did our rehab, we were at over 1,500. So we saw a little bit of decline in that. So this will, this time when we, tur we turned it on today, actually, we had, we had uh, 1,570 when we first turned it on. It slowly goes down, but quite a bit of capacity coming out of that well. And it's a result of, you know, cleaning out that formation. Mm -hmm. So you get more for your money. <laughs> okay, very good. Additional discussion. Hearing none, I'll place the motion before us then to a vote. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Motion carries. Uh, moving on to item uh, 6H. Do I have a motion to move resolution R-121-23, amending the employee referral bonus program for police to include all sworn law enforcement with the exception of the police chief? And this is a direct referral. I move approval. All right. Motion for approval made by Alder Wheeler. And I'll speak on this one. Okay. Yep. Uh, and actually, I do have a staff recommended a change to this resolution that I'm hopeful that you're open to. Uh, so, the intention of this resolution 
is a few meetings back, council approved a referral program for police officers um, designed specifically for the officer level position. Uh, we currently have a sergeant position that's open that we uh, plan to do externally recruitment. And so we'd like to have this referral bonus program available for all sworn officers or all sworn police department personnel except for the chief. So that would include officers, uh, detectives, sergeants, lieutenants, and the deputy chief. Hopefully we don't have to go there, but in case it, in case it is. Um, so that was the intention of this resolution. My hopeful amendment that you guys could make for me, and I apologize, I didn't catch this earlier. Uh, the resolution that's in there that's for your consideration is the exact same as before. And so the budget amendment language actually needs to be struck from here. We don't wanna do another budget amendment. Uh, the budget amendment we did last time is expected to still cover the referral bonus program even with this expansion. So we don't need to do an additional budget amendment. So uh, Alder Wheeler, you made the motion to approve. So I'm hopeful you'll do a friendly amendment to strike that last be it further resolved clause, which includes the budget amendment. I wanna make a friendly amendment to remove the be it further resolved um, concerning the uh, budget amendment, which was taken care of in the previous resolution. So we will vote on this first. Okay. Uh, it was a friendly amendment, so I think technically it's just that is what it is, unless there's accept or okay. disagreement by the committee. All right. Go ahead, Alder Gerhardt. Thanks. I just have one question. So the we're including sergeants, lieutenants. Uh, so if we if we transfer a sergeant lieutenant, the person that recommended them would get the referral bonus. Is that what's? I'm I'm, I'm a little confused because it's not we're not changing the policy of the referrals, we're just changing which positions being transferred could qualify for the referral bonus? Exactly, okay. so the same people doing the referring still apply, so it'd be any city employee, um, but it's what position we're trying to fill that would be expanded to include these other positions. Okay, and I hadn't realized that it excluded those other positions previous when we, when we did this, so that's good to know. The only question I have in that regard then is in the program itself, it talks about for lateral police officer hires, does that, police officer, does that qualifier include all of those levels? Or does that, or is that, I don't know, I guess I just want to show what the terminology is. Does police officer cover all of those positions or is that, is that a gener generic term or is that a more specific term? I actually don't know. Sorry, Chad, if you can help me out. Purposes of this particular policy, yes, that would cover all positions. So I think uh, HR updated an earlier section of that particular policy to actually specify the specific positions. And uh, for whatever reason, we did not elect to update that throughout the entire document. But the spirit and intent would be is that, yes, any further reference utilizing police officer covers all sworn positions with the exception of the police chief. Just want to make sure that we don't yep. have to add, subsequently add a yep, document. Fair enough. Okay, awesome, thanks. Mm -hmm. So we are voting on the resolution as amended. Correct, to strike that budget amendment last clause. Is that necessary to say to strike? I think okay. so. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, those in favor of approval of the resolution that's been brought forward as amended to strike the budget amendment. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Motion carries. You're going to speak to that at council then as well? I can, and whoever makes the motion, <laughs> do it as amended by finance committee. Yeah. All right. Very good. Uh, moving on to 6I. Um, do I have a motion to move resolution R-127-23, amending the 2023 park fee fund budget Additional pickleball amenities. And this is a direct referral. Do you want to say? Oh, I move approval. All right, we have a motion for approval made by Alder Wheeler. And uh, Scott, are you speaking to this? I can. Are you? Are you? Mike, is that? I what can chime mean? in on this one. Yeah. You and want to start then, lead. Yes. Take the lead. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Uh, and thank you, Finance Committee, for uh, consideration of this budget amendment for 2023. Uh, we brought this forward before, but we've got some updated information from our tourism partner, the Fitchburg Chamber Visitor Business Bureau, uh, who's been working with the Capital Area Pickleball Association to bring a tournament in August to Fitchburg. But one of the critical uh, items that we need is infrastructure and amenities at the existing uh, pickleball courts to kind of bring that tournament to Fitchburg. Uh, so this is a budget amendment request of 35000 through park fees, and we appreciate Alders Wheeler and Strassman a willingness to bring it forward as co-sponsors and also the mayor as a direct referral. Uh, we're hopeful that if we can get your support and the council's support tonight at the two-thirds level, then we can move forward with those items to have them in place for that August tournament. And uh, you've got a letter also from our uh, executive director president from the Fitchburg Chamber that just kind of provided details and information on the growth of the sport and the potential for even the local economic impact of some small tournaments that could be hosted with this kind of infrastructure. So we appreciate your consideration. Yeah, very good. I supported the, uh, the earlier resolution and I'll support it again this evening. Is there discussion? Cor uh, questions, Alder Gerhardt? No? Uh, those in favor, signify by saying aye. Oops, I'm sorry. Go yeah. ahead, Alder Wheeler. Yeah. yeah, I just want to put out there that, you know, previously before I had denied this um, due to just trying to get a better understanding of when the city will provide uh, money for parks, you know, for something like this and when others, it seems like, have to um, raise money to get certain things done. And the way I'm like looking at this now is through an economic development um, lens and that, you know, when we have... Um, tournaments and other things that's going to have an economic impact on the city. I feel comfortable just doing it this way. So I just wanted to make that point. Thank you. Very good. Additional discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, and uh, moving on to our last action item of 6J. So I have a motion to move resolution R-128-23, amending the 2023 general fund and technology fund budgets, office furniture for new positions. It's a direct referral. I move approval. All right. We have a motion for approval made by Alder Gerhardt. I can take this one. Uh, as you know, the city has added a couple of positions in its 2024 budget that were, I'm sorry, 2023 budget uh, that were approved by city council during the last operating budget process. Uh, one of those positions was the application and systems administrator position in the IT department. The other was the deputy city administrator position. Uh, due to ongoing space needs issues in city hall, uh, we are going to be voluntarily moving the IT work group uh, down to the former uh, emergency operations center space that's located in the basement of City Hall. Uh, there was not a space large enough in uh, City Hall outside of the basement that it could accommodate that work group of four. Uh, it is intended to be a temporary move for them and that once the police department vacates their space, we can uh, be begin to do some shuffle up within City Hall and uh, relocate those folks out of the basement. I do want to stress that they are heading there voluntarily and uh, <laughs> that it is a short-term relocation, ideally. And then uh, the space that's been vacated by that IT work group will uh, also, on a short-term basis, house the deputy city administrator. And what you have before us is the costs associated with uh, office furniture for both of those positions, as well as uh, moving the equipment uh, or the existing office furniture for our IT department uh, from the second floor here down to the basement and then any other related uh, items for that uh, particular move. Questions at all? Hearing none. Thank you, Chad. Uh, I'll place the motion before us then to a vote. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Motion carries. Uh, moving on to announcements, uh, our next finance committee meeting is scheduled for June 14th, 2023, the CIP meeting, and yes, I'm sorry, and, and June 27th, 2023 for the regular meeting. I should back up, but it's a special finance committee meeting scheduled for tomorrow evening, June 14th, and then the CIP, for the CIP, and then June 27th for the regular finance committee meeting. 
Do I have a motion to adjourn? I move adjournment. All right. Motion made by Alder Wheeler for adjournment. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Motion carries. We are adjourned at 6.35 p.m. Thank you.